So my name is Carl Diaz, I'm with the Learning Resources Center here at the University of Colorado Denver. And today we're going to be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about kinematics, but we're also going to be talking about uh, free fall and projectile motion because they kind of connect. They're not the same thing, they're different concepts, but they connect. There's a reason why we talk about all these things together. So let's get started. So first of all, kinematics. Why are we giving those to you? Well, we talk about, if you watch the video for the uh, displacement velocity acceleration graphs they talk about in there and you should be talking about in class how kinematics is uh, derived from those equations so when or, or the kinematics equations are derived from those graphs sorry I said that really weird so those graphs that we're getting there those constant accelerate the displacement velocity acceleration graphs we know those are from con those are we just talked in that video in class about how those are constant acceleration right that's motion with constant acceleration we derive the kinematics kinematics equations from there, right? So here are the kinematics equations. First of all, I know professors just give them in one dimension. I wrote them in every dimension here so that you could see them. We're not, I'm not gonna derive every single one. I derived one for you to show you something here, to prove something to you. But you need to know these. Your professors will give them to you, but what you need to know is that you can write them for both x and y. They'll probably just give you for the x, but you need to know that all of these can be written for x or y it's just y be redundant. So your professor, these are all of them, written for both x and y. These two don't have an x and y, but all these three do. Depending on who your professor are, they might say all these are the kinematics. They might just say these are the kinematics, these three right here. It's really uh, depends on the professor and what's going on. They might say those are the three. It depends, but it's gonna be a, a combination of these, okay? Like we said, since we derive these equations from those graphs with, that we're describing motion with constant acceleration, we know that these kinematics equations and they're very specific. You can only use these in a very specific situation. This is important. You can't always use kinematics. You can only use them. This is why the definition is so important to describe an, how an object moves with constant acceleration, okay? So that's like the definition of kinematics. It's how we describe motion of an object when acceleration's constant, or how we describe how an object moves. I shouldn't say motion one. Motion's one of the things, right? But kinematics is the way we describe, right, how an object moves with constant acceleration. So anytime we ask you how an object moves and the acceleration's constant, right, you need to be thinking kinematics. We're saying, hey, how far did the thing go? How fast is the thing moving? Or how fast will it be moving? Something like this. What was its rate of change in motion? How fast did it speed up? How fast did it slow down? How fast did it change direction? Well, not so much here, but using it so much. And how long did it take to get there, right? These things we can use, we can use the kinematics to solve for these things, how far it went, how fast we're going, how slow we're going, how fast or slow we changed, uh, speed up or slow down, and how long it took to get there. We can Use these kinematics equations to solve for these things only when acceleration's constant, okay? And so again, just to show you that these kinematics equations are coming from constant acceleration, this is uh, just the snippet of one of those graphs, right, that you've been doing. But as you know, in the, this is a velocity versus time graph here, okay? Velocity versus time. If you can't see that already, a little bit bigger. But this is velocity versus time, okay? We know, you already know this, the area under a velocity versus time graph gets you displacement. You know this already, right? So we have two, right? When we have something like this, we wanna break it up into two areas, a triangle and a square, right? We know the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and we know the area of a square is base time height. But since this is velocity times time, we can change these letters, right? We, we know the height will be velocity, right? A value of velocity, we know the, the base will be some value of time. So we can rewrite the area of uh, the triangle for this graph specifically saying that it's one half, right? The, the height is going to be the velocity and the base is going to be the time, right? Okay. I have them kind of mixed. I, I know I have them mixed there, but keep in mind the velocity is the height and the time is the, I know they're switched there, but it's okay, right? Still means the same thing because they're multiplied. So the height is velocity, the base is time, Right, and then for the square, right, it's just base times height or velocity is gonna be the height and time is gonna be the base, right? So this is the area we're under here, right? We gotta add these two things together. And like we said, we know that the area under the curve gets us displacement, so we can start the equation by saying, okay, the displacement's equal to 
then the first area we have is the square, so that's velocity times time, right? Then we're going to add that to the area of a triangle, right? Here's the area of a square, here's the area of a triangle. We're going to add the area of a square, which is velocity times time, using the variables in the, in the graph, right? Plus one half vt, or one half, one half base times height, or one half velocity times time, right? They're the same thing. I had to just explain how they're the same thing, so they're the same thing. You've got to understand that, okay? And we can see we're getting close to a kinematics equation, right? We're getting close, we're getting close, right? And so the next thing that we know is that acceleration is equal to velocity over time, right? We know this, right? We know that uh, 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 from our equation sheet and from the things we've been knowing, a lot of different reasons we know that that's the equation for acceleration. We solve that equation for velocity and replace this velocity over here, not this one, not this one, but this velocity. Right? We replace it with a times t, we get this combination of one half, right, times a, right? Well, the a is going to come in, remember, a is replacing v, v is being replaced by a times t, so there's a times t. Maybe I should write that a little bit more clear so you can see it. There's the a times t that's being, that the v is being replaced by, and there's the t that was already there. That's probably a lot more clear, right? And there's a one half that was already there. We're just replacing that v by a times t. Then t times t, right, is t squared. That a doesn't get multiplied. It does, but I mean, it doesn't make change anything in the equation, right? But when those two t's get multiplied, they'll turn into t squared. And look at that. We have this kinematics equation. Displacement's equal to v, and we know that this is the v initial because this was the initial velocity, right? So uh, v initial times time plus 1 half a t squared, right there. So that's how these, equa these equations came from those graphs. So they can only be used when acceleration is constant, because this graph is when acceleration is constant, right? The slope is acceleration, the slope is constant, acceleration is constant here. It's either zero or constant, right? But it's not changing. Acceleration is a slope, acceleration is constant, because the slope's constant, okay? So we know this, okay? It's super, super, super important that you understand this, okay? That it can only be used when acceleration is constant, okay? So that means it can only be used when net force is constant. Well, how do you know when net force is constant? Well, you, that's where Newton laws come in, right? If you use Newton's second law, right, and you get an equation, right, you're going to use Newton's second law, which is the sum of forces are equal to ma, right? The net force is equal to the, the rate of change of motion for an object. Remember, acceleration is rate of change of motion in the object. So when net force makes an object change its motion, right? And whatever forces are on, let me write this a little bit clear. Whatever forces are on this side, right? When you, after you draw your free body diagram and you fill in this equation, you have forces. Like for example, it might be like a push, force from a push minus friction. If these forces stay constant, we say you push a box for 10 meters and that force stays constant for a certain amount of force and that friction stays constant, then the net force stays constant. That's one way to know that the acceleration stays constant. Okay, the other way to know is to make sure that the mass stays constant, right? Because if you solve this acceleration, it's F net over M, so you want to look at that, okay? If you want to know what your acceleration is, do this equation, make sure that the net, for whatever the forces are in terms of your net, stay constant, and make sure that your mass stays constant, okay? And if they do, then acceleration stays constant. You can use these kinematics equations to do what? To solve for how the object moves. How far it's going, how fast it's going, how fast it's changing its speed, or slowing down, speeding up, right? The time it took to get there, but only then, all right? Specific, you cannot use these for anything else. We use conservation of energy to solve for motion of objects when acceleration isn't constant, okay? I'm just gonna tell you. That's what we'll do. So it's gonna be a different thing. So you won't be able to do this, so don't have your head here, all right? So how does free fall fall into it? Well, free fall, the definition of free fall is when the force of gravity is the only force acting on an object, okay? That's the, that's the first definition. It's the only force acting on an object. That's what free fall is. Because of this rate, because of this, the force, right, it's gonna have a rate of change of motion. This is saying a little weird, right? Um, but because of this, the, the gravity, 
the net force on the object that the only thing working on is gravity, it's gonna have a rate of change in motion only due to that force, right? Only due to the force of gravity if nothing else is working on it. We're ignoring air resistance, okay? We're not talking about air resistance right now, okay? But, with, so, so, you know, for a situation like this, when you throw the marker up, the minute it leaves your hand, it is in free fall, even though it's moving up. Why? Because of the definition. The only force that's acting on the marker once it leaves your hand is gravity. That means it's in free fall. And because of this, right, because of this, we know, right, the rate of change in motion from gravity, what we call G, and it's 9.8. So when the only, when the net force is only coming from gravity, we know the acceleration or the rate of change in motion that the object's gonna experience is gonna be 9.8 meters per second, and that's what we call G. Now, what does that mean that's the only acceleration it's gonna feel? Keep in mind, this is important you understand that, that that, it determines the rate, the rate. Remember, if you're not speeding up or slowing down, if you're moving at a constant velocity, you don't have acceleration, you don't have a change in motion, right? So when you have a change in motion, when you're speeding up or slowing down, right, which is what's happening when you throw something up because it stops at its peak height and starts to fall down, otherwise it would fly off into space, right? then this is describing the rate at which you slow down, the rate at which you speed up, right? So that's what we're seeing. Every object, when they're in free fall, it doesn't matter their mass, okay? Every, mag every object, when they're in free fall, when the only force that's acting on them is gravity, right? Then they're, they're, the, way that they, the rate at which they speed up and the, way that, and the rate at which they slow down is gonna be this 9.8 meters per second to square all objects, no matter how large they are, okay? The only thing that dictates how they fall is their air resistance, okay? If they do, right, if they have different areas, right? A leaf, right, has a very large area, so when it falls, it takes a while to fall because it makes so much contact with the air, but it's still falling with 9.8 meters per second if we don't include that drag from the air. Okay, but because it's there, the, the, the leaf doesn't fall like, let's say, a rock does. But when we went to the moon, this was confirmed. When we went to the moon, we did the experiment where we had a feather, and we had a hammer, and they dropped them at the same time. And because we were standing on the moon, the moon has its own rate of change of motion, its own G. And those objects, if there's no air, right, there's a vacuum on the moon, there's no air resistance, so it shouldn't affect the feather no matter how it's shaped and it shouldn't affect any objects how they're shaped. When they fall, they should fall at the same rate, which means they should hit the ground at the same time, right? And it, when they did that, they dropped, look, watch this video, you can look it up on YouTube, it's really cool. They dropped the feather and they dropped the hammer and they hit at the same time because they're, they fall at the same rate because the force of gravity is constantly pulling us down towards the center of, of uh, towards the center of Earth, right? And this is happening all the time, by the way. So it's important to take away from free fall. We're using this idea of free fall as an example and nothing is acting on us, right? We're in free fall and the only force on us is gravity. But what you should take away from this is this is trying to describe weight, right? Because even if I'm on, not on free fall, I'm standing on the floor, right? But I'm on the second floor in a building right now. If this floor wasn't here, I'd fall, right? Because gravity is still pulling on me right now. I'm still experiencing a rate of 9.8 meters per second due to gravity. It's just gravity's not the only force acting on me, right? The force of, from the floor is pushing up on me, so I'm in equilibrium. But if the floor wasn't there, I'd fall. And I'd fall at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And why? Because that's my weight. My mass combined with that rate of change in motion, that pull towards Earth, is going to be your weight. And that's the force of weight. So when we say the force of gravity is the only thing acting on you, what we're saying is that it's your weight is the only force acting on you. Your, for, your weight is a force. That's what we're trying to teach you here. And when you're in free fall, your weight is the only force acting on, or if an object's in free fall, the weight of that object's the only thing acting on it. But another way to say that is the only thing acting on the object when it's in free fall is the force of gravity. But you have weight always, right? Why do you have weight no matter where you stand on Earth? Because the Earth is still trying to pull you down. How much of a rate is it trying to pull you down? 9.8 meters per second squared, right? It's always trying to do this.
right? And if you don't have something large enough counteracting, of course counteracting that, right? If you try to stand on a tissue paper, you break through the tissue paper. Why? Because your weight, right? But what is your weight? Your weight is just your mass combined with how much the earth is pulling down on you, right? But if you have enough, something large enough, enough force to counteract you, like a floor, like I'm standing on the second floor, it's counteracting that. I'm not falling through the floor like it would if a tissue paper tried to hold me up on the second floor, right? So this is trying to describe weight. Keep that in mind. That's a big takeaway, all right? Is this, but really, just understand the definition of free fall. It's the only, it's when the force of gravity is the only thing acting on an object, but we're also talking about weight, all right? Free fall can also be described as when weight is the only thing acting on the object. The weight of the object is the only thing acting on the object. So, because of this, this will always be true. You've got to memorize this stuff. This is the concepts to memorize here. You have to know this stuff to solve the questions. You'll see why in a second, okay? But what's always true, we know this idea of free fall. We take this definition of free fall in, right? We can say some things, okay? So first of all, we can use kind of this little description I have over here to make sense of this, right? So we know when we throw, again, when the object leaves my hand, all right? The minute it leaves my hand, it's in free fall, right? So when I throw something up, and what this is trying to tell you is this is the object moving up, this is the object moving down. Same picture, right? In terms of the free body diagram, because weight, the, the force from gravity is the only thing acting on it. So the rate of change in motion is the only, the only thing there is, is, is acceleration from that force, right? And so we have different velocities you just try to describe that. But in terms of whether we're going up or coming down, it looks the same, right? This is also something we call a motion diagram. It's a ball, but you also can think of this as a dot, right? So when I throw an object up, as it starts to go up, it starts to slow down. How do I know this? Because it stops at some point. If the marker didn't stop at some point, it would fly off into space or into the ceiling, right? But it stops at some point, right? So when you throw something up, it stops. And as these, as this picture, you see these space closer and closer together, that's what that means. It's getting slower. You're thinking of these as snapshots taking in a second ap apart. But we see every second, it's not covering as much distance, right? So that's telling us it's slowing down. We know the initial velocity was tossed up. That's what that's telling us here, okay? Now when we reach max height, our velocity is zero, but that's our speed. Our speed is zero, all right? We're still changing direction. And remember, velocity is both speed and direction. So if we're changing direction at the top of our, at the, at, at, up, at the peak of the height, we're stopped in terms of our speed, but we still have acceleration. We have max acceleration. We have the rate of change of motion due to gravity because there's no other force acting on us up there besides weight. But what it's doing at that moment is it's turning the object around to bring it back down. So there's still max acceleration, even though there's zero speed, or we can say there's zero velocity. It's max velocity at its peak height is zero, or minimum, however you want to say it. The velocity at the peak height of your throw is zero. It has to be, it has to stop. If you said it, it would go into space. But it's still experiencing an acceleration of 9.8 meters a second down. But what is it doing? It's changing direction. So there's still a change in velocity, right? And then it starts to speed up and come back down, right? So then it starts to get velocity again, right? But it's, so when we throw it up, we're gonna throw it up with a certain speed and it's gonna reach a height where it's gonna be zero, but acceleration is gonna be max, I shouldn't say max, it's gonna be G, but it's G the whole time, right? Or 9.8 meters per second. And then over here, when it starts to fall down, again, this is the same thing, right? They're getting further apart as we, as we get closer to the ground, which means it's speeding up. But this is the same thing, just moving down. The initial velocity, it starts at zero, but then it comes back down with a certain velocity, right? And reaches your hand with a certain velocity. If there's no air resistance, believe it or not, these velocities will match. The velocity you threw it up with and the velocity you catch it with will be the same, okay? And the max heights will be zero. Okay, that's what this is trying to tell you. This will always be true, all right? So at the max height, max height, velocity will be zero, but acceleration will be 9.8. It will be there, it will be maxed out because max, you cannot connect acceleration to velocity, okay? Velocity could be just your speed, 
right? Or the direction you're pointing. Acceleration is your change in motion. So if you have a change in motion, which is what the object's doing at its peak height, it's look, changing motion. You can see it, right? Can you see that? It stops and it comes back down. There's a point where it stops and comes back down, right? So there's a change in motion. So even though the speed is zero, its acceleration is g at the max height. Okay, otherwise if it didn't stop, it would keep flying up. And then on the way down, right, its velocity, it starts at an initial velocity of zero and then starts to speed up down, right? But it's experiencing g the whole time. That's important to know. That's what free fall is, right? The best example of it is just like drop, right? A good example is just dropping a rock, right, or something like this. But the initial velocity at that peak height before, when you let it go is gonna be zero, and then it's gonna speed up because of the pull of gravity, the weight of that object's gonna just pull it down naturally, right? And make it speed up at what rate? It's gonna speed up at a certain rate, right? It's gonna go down, down, it's gonna start speeding up, getting faster and faster and faster, but not at some random rate, at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Because this is the rate at which something speeds up and at the rate at which something slows down. So when I throw this marker up, it's slowing down at a rate of what? 9.8 meters per second squared. And when it starts to fall down, it's speeding up at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So even if you, there's a person standing over here and you shoot a bullet, and you shoot the bullet the same time the person lets, like they're sitting in a tree, and they jump out of the tree at the same time you fire the bullet at them while they're sitting at the tree, the bullet will fall at the same rate of the person and still hit them for ignoring air resistance because even though the bullet's moving fast and the person is, 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 uh, is not moving as fast, they're both falling at the same rate, right? So because of all this, we can say this stuff, this is the stuff, again, you have to memorize, write this down. We can always say, this will always be true, that the Fy, right, F net in the Y will be your weight. The F net in the Y will be your weight only, okay? The acceleration in the Y will be 9.8 meters per second. Again, we described Y for all this. No sign, the sign is coming from the coordinate system, okay? Don't say negative 9.8 meters per second. Don't say negative G or negative A, but positive. It's up to the coordinate system. If, if down is positive, then this is positive 9.8 meters per second. If down is negative, then this is negative 9.8 meters per second, okay? It's a value, the sign, it's a vector, so the sign is coming from the coordinate system, okay? Velocity in the y is changing, as we said, and because of this, the velocity at peak height is zero, always, no matter what situation, we'll talk about this, but this has to be memorized, you have to know this, okay? And if we're talking about two dimensions, playing catch with someone, something like this, right? Then we can say a few more things, all right? We ignore the acceleration in the x. I mean, we're ignoring air resistance, I'm sorry. And uh, 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 keep that in mind. So this acceleration in the x, if you throw something, keep that in mind. That's still free fall. When you throw something to someone, that's free fall. If someone's standing on the top of a cliff and you throw something up to them, the, that's free, the object's in free fall the minute it lifts your hand and before it touches theirs. They throw it down to you, that's free fall. These are all free fall situations. Sometimes you're just throwing something up and down, that's free fall. Sometimes you're tossing stuff to people, throwing things, all these things, okay? So if you have that, you might have some x dimension as well, but in that case, if we're ignoring air resistance, your acceleration in the x will be zero for that, okay? And the, if the acceleration in the x is zero, the velocity in the x stays constant. So keep in mind what that's trying to kind of tell you something that the velocity in the y dictates how high something goes, and if it's a two-dimensional, uh, you know, it's a two-dimensional velocity, which means it's moving at an angle like that, right? Then the x direction is dictating how far it goes. You have to know this, keep this in your head. The velocity in the y for two dimensions, or at any, at, for both of these, right? The velocity in the y, this is trying to tell us something else, is that it dictates how high an object goes. Right, so the velocity that you give it in the y, the velocity that it has in the x dictates how far it goes, okay? So when you throw something at an angle, what dictates how far it goes is, is, is the component of the x, right? What dictates how high it goes is the component of the velocity in the y, all right? That's what we're trying to say. So don't lose, remember this stuff always, don't lose it, okay? 
And the last thing to remember, it's kind of like a special thing, is that if you're if you have a range question, something like this, you're playing catch with someone and the ball's coming back to the, its original height, then the displacement in the Y can be zero as well, okay? This is important to know. These are good things to know, okay? And if I didn't talk about it over here, I should have time, all right? If you do have two equations, like two dimension, you're gonna have two equations for your, for your velocity or if you have two objects. Remember, kinematics can be used for any objects. It's a one dimension. If you have two objects coming towards each other, Equations can be bound through time, because time doesn't tick different for objects, right? If I have two trains coming at each other, the time ticks the same for them, right? Or if I throw a ball to someone, the components of velocity and the x and y, the time ticks the same for them, right? So time can bind equations. That's another kind of math. This is a mathy thing to remember, but all these things here, right, are the, are the uh, concepts to remember. And again, this last one is um, if the object returns to its original height, so, projectile motion is a special case of free fall. So whenever you have projectile motion, which the definition of projectile motion is object becomes a projectile when the net force is gravity, okay, or the net force is the weight of an object, right? Then you can use these ideas, right? So what, if you kick a ball off a cliff, right? When you kick the ball off the cliff, the initial x velocity will have some number but the initial in the y will be zero. Where's that concept coming from right here? At peak height, the velocity is zero. This is peak height, it's gonna come down somewhere, right? So we say the velocity in the y, keep in mind, the velocity at peak height is zero. So this is the velocity in the y at peak height, I wanna make sure that's clear, is zero, okay? But the velocity in the x, you're gonna have something when you kick it off, right? So you're gonna have some number, but make sure you use that there velocity at this max height is zero, then when it gets down here, unless it drops directly down, then it won't have any x velocity if it just falls straight down, right? But if it hits the ground at an angle, it's gonna have some final x and final y velocity, right? So the things that we can always write for this, no matter what they tell us in the problem, is that the acceleration in the y is 9.8 meters per second squared. It's gonna always be true for this situation. You can always write it down. Acceleration in the x is zero. The sign for displacements come from the coordinate system. So does all this stuff, right? We talked about this. The sign for acceleration comes from the coordinate system. Sign for velocity comes from the coordinate system. Sign for displacement comes from the coordinate system, okay? So even though if you're falling down here, but if we say down is positive, your displacement's positive, right? If we say down is negative, then your displacement's negative, okay? When you come down here, that's what I'm trying to say. So you use your coordinate system. We saw problems in other videos where I do this, and that's where you'll, you'll see that, right? But just keep in mind, if down is negative, let's say down is negative here, that means acceleration would then get a negative sign, but only then, okay? Only then would acceleration get a negative sign, all right? And then the displacement in the y would also be negative, okay? If we said this was positive x, then the displacement in the x would be positive. Let's say here we say the displacement in the y, right? We said this was displacement and the y was negative. Displacement in the y here is positive, right? So that means when we move up, this is negative y up here, the displacement's gonna be negative. Even though we're moving up, if this is negative up here, we said down was positive and up was negative, then the displacement would be negative, okay? But if we do this and say it's positive up here and negative down here, then again, why the displacement would then be positive at that point, right? And the same thing with acceleration. So here acceleration is still negative only because down is still negative, okay? That would get be the sign for it, okay? But if this is negative, if we said this was positive x or this was negative x, the negative x displacement would be negative, okay? So that's what we mean by the sign comes from the coordinate system, all right? But again, these are all free fall situations, which is, uh, Projectile motion is a special case of free fall, so we just know things. You can always write these. They won't be in your question. They won't be given. You're going to have to write these and memorize these and know these, these questions every time. So even just like we said for this situation, for this one right here, we know the acceleration in the y is going to be 9.8 meters per second. Acceleration in the x is going to be zero. Displacement signs, in fact, all the signs are going to come from uh, the coordinate system, and velocity at max height will be zero. So up here, Vy will be zero, but if you if you come up at a flat, right, Vx will have some number, right? These would be your final. So up here, 
here it was vy initial was zero, here vy final would be zero, right? Because that's where you're throwing it up to. Or down here, vy would have some number and vx would have some number. Your initial vy and your initial x, right? If you throw it up at some angle, you're going to have components, right? vx and vy, right? So those are going to both have numbers where once it gets up here, the velocity in the y will be zero and the velocity in the x will still have some value. Okay, and again, where's that coming from over here? So you, because you can use that as numbers in your kinematics equations, okay? That's the whole connection here, all right? Is because net force is constant, okay? And because acceleration's constant, acceleration's only 9.8 meters per second, kinematics equations can be used to solve for all these situations. We can solve for how far the ball goes, how fast the ball's moving, all these all these situations we can use kinematics for because acceleration is constant. Because these kinematics equations came from a derived constant motion, right? So keep this in mind. That's what we're trying to connect here. That's the connect. These are two different, these are the same thing, but these are not exactly the same concept as, as kinematics, but they connect because these are trying to describe constant acceleration to you. And you to notice what constant acceleration looks like and what constant net force looks like so that you can say, oh, this is what it looks like, and I know how to start using my kinematics equations so you can use them later, okay? Now, for this last one, again, projectile motion, you're just throwing it to a buddy, but everything still stays the same. We can just add a few more, right? Here, the displacement's gonna be zero. That's the thing we're adding because it's coming back to its original height. But again, acceleration in the Y is 9.8 meters per second. Acceleration in the X is zero. Velocity in the X will stay constant. Velocity Y at peak height will be zero. Right? When the ball reaches up here, before it starts to come back down, the velocity will be zero right? in the y. Right? But even though velocity in the y is zero, what do we know? Acceleration in the y is still 9.8. Don't think that acceleration zero up there. We talked about all that, okay? You can have acceleration, but have zero velocity, right? Displacement zero for the reason we just said as well, because it's coming back to it. So I hope this was helpful. This is a big, important video. It helps you connect a lot of things. Um, I'm super proud of you. You're getting ready to start your journey through physics. Um, remember to get all the help you need because there's a lot of people around you that want to help you. I'll see you on the next video.